All right, you ready? Yeah. This video today is brought to you by. Okay. Where's that ring? Ah! Jesus. Let me put it on because people, she Baby. don't have her ring. They be watching. <laughs> Hey guys, so I have my husband here and we're gonna tell you a little bit how we met. Yeah, so this is going to be the story of how we met back, even in our teenage years, day one, because this has been a question that a lot of people have wondered. How did we get to know each other? How did we get started? Okay, so <laughs> I was uh, at the mall with my cousin at the time and what I was in high school. I don't yeah. remember what grade, but I was in high school. Um, he, We were both in high school. I was Same at the years. mall. And I forget what I was looking for, but we went into a shoe store that he worked at at the time. And I saw him and I just thought he was so attractive. Like I loved his smile. I loved how he looked, his physique. You know, he still has a physique, but I loved his physique. I loved, um, you know, just his appearance. And not only that, like he really was like a sweet, you still are, but you were a really sweet person. That really attracted me to him. So I go to my cousin and I tell her that I'm like attracted to him. And she goes over and I think she gave him my number. Yeah. So she came in. She was she was, gave me a, a piece of paper. I was like, hey, my cousin thinks you're cute. And gave me the number. And I, I did not pull the trigger um, as far as like calling her or texting her. Mm -hmm. She actually had found me on Facebook within that same week. Was it the very next day or... Just I forget. Probably, I know for sure within that same week. And that was where we started talking um, a little bit more as far as like getting to know each other. The very first time that we met in person alone, she actually had called me because she needed a ride to a, uh, a choir. Mm -hmm. um, um, they were getting ready to head out of town for a retreat or... It was something. Yeah, a retreat or conference or something like that. It was something for church. And so that had actually... That was actually a turn on for me because... I'm like, wow, like she's somebody that's in the church. In most cases, a lot of the females that I had dealt with at that time in high school were far removed from the church or might have went every now and again, but they weren't involved choir-wise or nothing like that. And when we were in the car, the conversation just flowed really, really smooth <laughs> from when I picked her up. Like, I can tell, like, we were both a little bit nervous um, as far as with having a conversation, but it wasn't anything that was forced. So that really attracted me because it was it was like a natural um, thing that we a natural chemistry that we had between each other that didn't have to be forced. And she was beautiful as well. So it was like, OK, she beautiful. She believes in God and is also active in the church. And then also the conversation just has a good, good chemistry to it. So from there, I was like, OK, cool. We can we can pursue this and see how it goes even further. And so when she came back uh, from being out of town, we started hanging out more, going on yeah. dates and and checking out movies and just, some, just sometimes just hanging out. So. Yeah. Our very first date was... We went to P.F. Chang's. Yeah. It was a group date. Now that was... <laughs> that was I. That was one thing. My wife, she loves her friends. She loves her friends. When it comes to dates, I am a one-on-one -on -one date type person. I'm not a group date person. I can do it. It's just not my preferred thing. So, so. much has changed now, though. Yes, yes. So it has changed, has changed, yes. It was, I was just very much so like, I wanted to show him off. I wanted him to be involved with my friends. Like, I wanted that. And I was so naive. Yeah, but, I mean, that's it's part of growth. We were, yeah. like we said, we were young when we yeah. were first started talking. And so we talked for how many months was it? It was a while. Yeah, it was quite quite some time. And this is a part of it that not a lot of people know is that uh, <laughs> when we first were talking, uh, I actually had broke things off between us yeah. um, because um, we were same age, but a grade apart. I had started I had started school because of my birthday a year, a grade ahead. And so when we first met, I was just removed from high school. She was in high school. And so I was actually taking a year off during that time from school and I was getting ready to end up leaving for college. And this is where, you know, although I love the fact that she was in the church, this is where my, you know, worldly carnal mind that came into play where it was like, you know what, like I'm getting ready to go to college. I'm going to explore, you know, 
myself being single and things like that and ended up breaking things off in a not so favorable way we didn't necessarily leave things on the on the best note no we didn't we, uh... keith wanted to go and do stuff with other women <laughs> or girls <laughs> you know college boys who have yeah. that mindset admittedly so yeah like i, I was I was young and, and even naive in that sense of just thinking that that was the consideration of what fun was and what needed to happen as I stepped into what I considered manhood of being on my own. Right. And so during that time, we, like I said, we didn't have a, a good, you know, mm -mm. breaking apart at that time. It was bad. We got into it. Like, yeah. It was over, even like some headphones. Like. No, it was a charger, car charger. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Got into it over like, it over like the smallest little thing. <laughs> and so it was a, about a, at least a year and a half that we had no contact with each other. Cold turkey. I ended up actually getting into a relationship while in college. Um, she also had got into a relationship yeah. during that time. Both lasted about the same amount of time. And upon each of those relationships ending roughly around the same time as well, Let's get into those relationships, though, because yeah, I feel yeah, like definitely. a lot of people want to know. Yeah. Um, so the relationship that I was in, I was in a relationship with a military guy, uh, with a military person. Um, I did not know that he was married. So I still stayed there with him um, until I found out like that he was absolutely married. And after that, I left from where I was and I came back home and you can tell your insights. Yeah. <laughs> and so to jump back when I got into a relationship, I was in college. Um, I was very much like a to myself type person, but I had roommates that were very out there. And so they were having a kickback at our apartment. I was back in my room, came out to grab something to eat, went back in the room and it was a young lady that in there that had interest or whatever. We began talking, had a relationship, I had some issues with uh, my roommates at the time, so I ended up moving in with her and her family. Mm -hmm. And so that was within like a very short period of our relationship as it started to progress. It was just some things that had transpired as far as like red flags um, on, you know, difference of beliefs right. and difference of actions um, and difference of how we saw the future going. And so that ended up breaking up and breaking out of there. And so upon coming back, because once we broke up, the living situation broke down as well. So I came back uh, home for the following semester. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like Holy Spirit, I just kind of put like Raven on my mind. And I'm just like, she's not going to respond to me, like regardless of what I do. Like, I think I was blocked on pretty much everything. At the time, Twitter. did you know that was the Holy Spirit? Or were you I just didn't, like I didn't thinking, know that was the Holy okay, Spirit. But you know now yeah, that, now that, now that was, know that that was the Holy Spirit. But no, at that time, I didn't. I was just thinking, okay, like. Like for me, once I leave somebody alone, like you out of sight, out of mind, mm -hmm. even if you are in sight, you out of mind, this is different. That is somebody popping up in my head that I haven't seen in over a year that although, yes, everything was good. We left on bad terms. So I was just like, nah, that's not really making sense. But all right, I'm, I'm going to try it anyway. I think I tried to look for her on Facebook was like the biggest thing at that yeah. time. Maybe Instagram was kind of getting big, too. But I didn't find her on either one of those. I'm like, dang, she must not have social media no more. But I find her on Twitter and find out she got all those. So I figured out, okay, I was I probably blocked. blocked. Him. Yeah. So, <laughs> and so at that point, I, I hit her up on Twitter, um, which was so unlikely. I hated Twitter. But either way, beside the point, I hit her up on Twitter. And um, we ended up going out and hanging out on Christmas Day of 2012. And to my surprise, like when i show up to her house on christmas day the whole family they was love there. him yeah and so this was my first time meeting a lot of them outside of her mom and dad uh and her brother like they remember me and they welcome me in like no problems um but as far as like, i met my grandmother yeah, grandmother she's like 90 aunts. 90 something at the time yeah no 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 she oh, was, was like she 90? 80 yeah she 80 was like something. 80 something yeah, yeah like near 90 yeah and um, like right away me and her was like real cool with each other she loved him yeah the aunts everything like there was it was almost like i was just like welcomed in and so from that point we started to rekindle um our friendship i'll say first for that first month 
And then about a month later was when we really made it official of being together. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. We truly appreciate you even just tuning in to this long video of trying to figure out how in the world we met. I will say this, that one of the things that um, I really do wish that I would have learned before I got married, because we know that there are a lot of you who are trying to overcome infidelity. And yes. then there are some of you who are just really looking at our relationship mm -hmm. and trying to gain like wisdom, maybe even just taking notes. But either way, um, we want I want to say this one thing that I truly wish before we got married is I wish that I would have taken my walk with God seriously yeah. and allowing the Holy Spirit to dive deeper into the things that was swept under the rug because those things, believe it or not, those things that are swept under the rug that you never talk about, or you don't really bring up, or you don't even really heal from, they, the enemy, once you get married, the enemy will absolutely lift up the rug and use those things as a weapon exactly. against your marriage. And so this is my, my advice, I believe you agree, our advice to you is to truly dive deep into the things that with the Lord, with the Holy Ghost, because anything outside of him is witchcraft. Exactly. But dive tr truly dive deep into those hurts, into those pains, and ask the Holy Spirit. I say this all the time with those who I like have helped with content um, and, and trying to share their testimonies and stuff. But sit with the Lord and ask him, or the Holy Spirit, and say, you know, Holy Spirit, what is it within me that the enemy could use against me as a weapon in my marriage to hinder us from going forward or pushing forward in you. Not that everything's going to be perfect. No marriage is perfect. But at the end of the day, you have to be mindful that it's a building process. Yes. And you're 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 literally being stripped of all selfishness to become selfless and one. The Bible says that uh, a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife and they will become one flesh. You guys are becoming one. Yeah. There's warfare in that. The enemy hates that. It's a replica of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's truly power. I wish I would have found consistency within my walk. Um, when you get married, it's a lot of things that start to come up. It's a lot of responsibilities that you weren't used to. Um, and then just going from being a single person, and I don't even care. Like I'm going to be honest with you. So a lot of people that even have lived with their significant other before they got married, mm -hmm. thinking it was going to prepare them. And even even those people have said the same thing. When you step into marriage, there's a difference. There's a difference mm -hmm. in those same responsibilities that, that you thought would just seamlessly roll over. There's a difference within communication. There's a difference within how the household is handled. And so I wish I would have found consistency within my walk prior to yeah. stepping into it um and in all honesty it was so much that went on early on and that that we stepped away from our walk with god being as close as it was at one point um so that would be my biggest point of advice for men and women alike yeah. to just find consistency within that walk make sure that that god is the number one appointment yes. of the day um you know obviously your spouse will be a second but make sure that God is that number, number one. one. Yeah. Anyway, God bless you guys and thank you again for watching.